name is Shai Schmelzer from the Oracle Visual Builder Cloud Service Team. And in this short demonstration, we're going to show you how to add new Oracle Jet UI components to Oracle Visual Builder Cloud Service. So in this tutorial, we're going to show you how to extend and add more UI components to the list of components you see over here in the component palette. So most of those components are Oracle Jet components. For those of you who are not familiar, if you go to oraclejet.org, you'll get to more information about Oracle Jet, which is our Java extension toolkit from Oracle. It's an open source thing. Um, one of the very useful things they have here is a cookbook with a lot of samples for each one of the components. Now, as you can see, they have a lot of components over here, and some of those are not actually included in your um, component palette in VBCS by default. So how can you add one of those to your application? Okay. So let's pick, for example, uh, the train component. Okay. Um, let's look it up. Yeah, there you go. So this is the train component. It gives you this type of navigation menu that you can add to an application. Now, the nice thing about the JET cookbook is that you can actually see exactly how to use it. Um, you can see there's an OJ train tag in here, uh, and then this is the data structure that it receives. Okay, so this is the step array, there's label and ID. And if you look over here, um, we're using the step array as the steps for this menu. Okay, and by the way, if you would change something like this, you go over here and you say fifth, okay and click apply, you would see this is changing here. So this is the JET cookbook, and let's see how we can now add this train component to our interface. So we have a little page over here. Uh, we can drop, for example, a button over here, but if you scroll down or if you search here, you wouldn't find the train component. That doesn't mean that you can't add it. First of all, if you go to the code level, okay, and uh, let's copy this section for the button. And after that one, instead of a button, we want to add a train. So if you click here and you do OJ and then T, uh, you would see that the train is actually in here. So you can choose it, okay? But that won't be enough. Uh, you'll see in a minute that you need to do one more thing, um, which is this whole thing is using the same jet way of loading things which is using require.js, okay? And in require.js, you need to specify which components you add to a page, okay? So since we're adding here OJS, OJ train, we'll be able to use it in a page. It's the same thing in your application, okay? So you might be wondering where are my component defined? If you click on the code section of your page, okay? You'll see here, this is the definition of the page, and over here we have all the components that are defined in the page. So just to show you as an example, right now it says OJS, OJ button. If I go back over to my UI design, okay, and let's say I add an avatar component down here, okay, and you'll now go back into the code area, you'll see that now we added the avatar. So if we want to add the train component, we basically need to copy, for example, this section, paste it. Okay, we might want to reformat this. Okay, instead of OJ button, we'll call this one the train. Okay, and we'll specify here exactly the same thing that you have specified here. So you can actually just copy it from here and paste it over here. Like that. So now you have the train component added to your application. Now you still can see anything, although you can click on it and you can see the properties over here. Okay. Um, in order to see something, you actually need to define steps. Now steps, if we look again over here, here they are defined and as an array. Okay, so you want to have an array in your application as well. How do you define that? You can go over to your variables Okay, and you can create here an array variable, but you also want to have um, a, a type of um, steps, right? So let's create a custom type. Okay, um, this would be an object and we'll call it a step. Okay, and inside the step, we'll add two string variables. Okay, one of them is called ID. 
okay and the other one is called label okay and if you look at ID and label those are exactly the two properties that we have here ID and label so now we have the object type right and the next thing we can do is we can create a variable okay we'll call this one steps val okay and this would be an array okay and the type of the array would be step all right so now we have a variable that we can associate steps to okay um, and if we go back to our ui and in the train we can indicate that the steps are coming from this steps variable so now we need to populate this variable with values um, one place where we can do this is when we load the page so let's create an action okay and we'll call this one load steps and we'll use an assign variable in here we'll take the steps variable items and we'll assign values to them okay so label for example could be first and id can be for example one all right so now we have an action we'll go back to the page and we'll invoke this action when we enter the page so new event enter the page and what we want to do here is load the steps all right let's run our little page when the page loads we have a step in the train called first and you can add more variables this way another way by the way that you can do this um, is you can create a business object which is something I already created here and I called it train options I added fields ID and label look at the uh, IDs of those okay and um, I added data to them okay so we have the ID and the label and what I can do now is switch our loading over here to be based on this business object. So let's bring in a call to a rest endpoint. We'll call our business object has a method called get train options. Okay. And after that, we'll assign the variable. So we just move things around like this. And over here, we now have the call. Let's rename it to get steps okay and then in the assign steps what we're going to do is from the get steps call the returned object has items each item has IDs and labels okay so we want to use this array to populate this array right so let's click on this array first and delete the current values that we assigned here okay and again we can expand this just to look at what's going on in here okay you can see the same structure and we can for example take and map those two fields or two arrays together okay let's run our page now and we get the all three steps over here showing up so this is for example how you add a component from the core jet components so one more thing you can find in the cookbook is that at the framework level they have explanation about something called um, composite components and that's a way for you to package components uh, as something that you can distribute and those can be complex components for example over here you have this flip card that is defined as a component and again you can learn here exactly how to define a component there's several files you need to define and then it's just again HTML and JavaScript at the end of the day though you zip all of those and you can actually download them so let's download this component it's called the uh, demo card 9 in my download folder and one of the nice thing is that again you can add this to your visual builder environment so let's go back to the page that we were designing and in this page in the component palette at the end you'll see an area for custom components so you can click the little plus sign and upload a composite component so in our case in the download we have the demo card 9 that we just downloaded uh, you can give it a name if you want to 
and import this component into Visual Builder Cloud Service. All right, so now we have the demo card over here and we can drag and drop it into the UI to create our demo card. Okay. And over here, you'll see all the properties it has. So for example, we need an avatar. So this would be the image shown here. So let's pick up an image, for example, this one. I will copy the image address, paste it here. And then we can give the email and the name and maybe a phone number like that. And now we can actually see the component over here and it's flippable. And this is one more way to add components to your UI. So this was a quick tutorial about how you can add even more UI components to your Visual Builder Cloud Service application.